I'm just going to read one poem now. <laughs> I've been going on so long. Um, for people who know, like John, that I would read something that was periodic table related, I'm going to share with you one poem. I've got it marked here, count it, one from the new issue of CCD, which John will get shortly because he has a poem on page 23. Um, but I had written poems for every element in the periodic table, and then later somebody said, hey, you should do Twitter length ones, so somebody's doing a contest. So I'm like, I'm going to write a poem for every element that's a Twitter length which I did, but I didn't realize that this was a contest. And in the middle of it, they said, oh, we've got our winners. And one of my things took third place. And I'm like, oh, cool, but I'm not even done yet. So <laughs> I still had to do them for all of them. And so my little one, because somebody has been sending me, it's so impossible to see in the Facebook, in this Zoom meeting, but you know, John will see it soon. And it is in CCD Magazine. And it is a short piece, about 10. Um, the actual one and the actual, uh, the full-length poem is a totally different one, but this is titled Tin Foil Hats on Tin Pan Alley. Jump on a hot tin roof wearing tin foil hats on Tin Pan Alley. Can our foods in it, or for the element, tin is even in the soil under our feet. Naturally found in soil, it gets in our food leaves tin within. It's within our tissue, in our bodies. And I suppose I'd care if I only had a heart. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was really funny because when I did the full tin one, I did it off of uh, The Wizard of Oz. But I did it too if I only had a brain. And I'm like, you know, that was the scarecrow, not the tin man. But I... <laughs> But anyway, I just did it that way anyway. So it was a Twitter link one in the quest to do Twitter link poems. As I said, it's not only in CCND's new book called Clear Lake, but it is also in the Twitterverse periodic table poetry because, as I had said, I have to have poems for every element, even if they're really tiny. So it's in both of these books. And as I had said, in the issue of CCND, there are also images with it. John, I know you've seen these before, but I have to show them because I love this brewery. Uh, Circle Brewing, where I had read for the Poetry Bomb. Davis, uh, you know what that is, a thing in Chicago. Some people decided you set up a time on a Sunday afternoon, go somewhere where you don't read poetry and just start reading stuff. You know, don't go to where, you know, and so people in Chicago would be like, well, let's all get together and go to this, you know, one area. And so we did that one year, but I'm like, I've always got to look for a different area. So I would go by you know, the Brookfield Zoo or, 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 you know, I'd go to different places just to be able to read stuff. And I did that when I moved to um, Austin as well, even though nobody does it here. And this was me outside of Circle Brewing where I did this and where I was reading things for the periodic table of poetry. And I had things with different filters, including, you know, they, when I do a live feed, it'd be crazy filters like this paper tear filter. So I have to show that one just because Circle Brewing is now closed, which makes me so sad. But we bought a keg of their beer and one day I'll open it before it goes bad and enjoy their beer after they've been closed. <laughs> so I don't know. But that was my one thing. Oh, as goofy as it was. Right. Um, I wanted to thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that poem and I wanted to mention because I think last month John was asking me what I've been up to and I was saying that I was writing things for uh, another book request from Cyberwit, uh, the last, you mentioned that it's Women's History Month, and the last two books I had released from Cyberwit two years ago was a book titled Shattering the Glass Ceiling. Tons of things and poems in different languages. I worked as an acquaintance rape workshop facilitator, and so I have a lot of stuff. And uh, then last year, because of the overturning of Roe v. Wade in the United States and the the fact that it changed laws in southern states so that people couldn't get drug medications because it might be from related to abortions and things and there were so many problems that i just wrote a bunch of stuff about that that was released in the book last year titled testament um and so this year they were having things like what could i be working on so i've been working on a piece pieces about the universe and life in it in all different parts of the world. Um, it starts with a poem about how the universe started, the beginning of the universe, and it has been the ends at the end of the universe, but then there are pieces about different countries, and so it might be little things about different parts of the United States, 
you know, a bunch of different European countries or, you know, Galapagos Islands or the Pacific Ocean and South America, Antarctica, you know. And so I had all of these things and I'm like, I don't know if the value of that should be that necessarily is I'm like, well, these remaining ones I might want to do. I might want to do one more about Arizona because we went to Meteor Crater. Um, where there's a huge depression because we think of one um, that was in um, the Gulf of Mexico that had a lot of iridium in it and probably destroyed the dinosaurs because of its impact. This one's much smaller, but the way we look at these things about um, changes in our Earth and what has happened throughout history. I have one all about different volcanoes when I talk about going to New Mexico because I've got a bunch of lava from New Mexico at the table right behind this camera right here. So I was looking for doing things for like that and looking for things from around the world that also have that kind of impact. Or even if it's just a matter of going somewhere and people being mad at you because they think that you picked a song, but you didn't because you just look like a stupid American. You know, you say there's just a bunch of things like that. And when you're talking about things with nature, I did think about the... Um, Everglades and then about avalanche um, icebergs in Wyoming and that oftentimes it's finding a place in nature is where you actually can start to understand how small the problems you're going through are and how powerful Mother Earth can be and try to come up with a connection in with that as well. And so I just appreciated that you're, this is, I'm, I'm talking about all this stuff because I wanted to say that I appreciated you talking about the things of understanding Mother Nature and, and how these things va vastly can change and affect you or how do you choose to define yourself in them as well. And so I just, so I gave you this long story about all the stuff with, you know, poems that I'm doing, but I just was, that's my silly way of saying thank you for sharing that because I think that's a very valuable message and thank you for that. And um, I'm hoping that we can go, I would really love to hear anything that John F. McGullen would like to share before we go to another round of poetry. So are you ready, my darling? Okay. I'm going to mute myself right now and say, take it away, my love.